For him alone, he is worthy. For him alone, he is worthy. For him alone is worthy. This Christ, the Lord, for him alone he is worthy. For him alone he is worthy. For him alone he is worthy. Christ the Lord for him alone is worthy for him alone he is worthy for him alone he is worthy he is Christ the Lord. For him alone he is worthy. For him alone he is worthy. For him alone he is worthy. He is Christ, the Lord, for him alone, he is worthy, for him, for him alone, he is worthy, for me alone is worthy is Christ the Lord for him alone he is worthy for him alone he is worthy for him alone is worthy. He is Christ the Lord. He is Christ the Lord. He is Christ the Lord. The Lord, He is Christ. 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 The Lord, for Him alone, He is worthy. For Him. Alone, he is worthy. For me, alone he is worthy. He is Christ, the Lord. He is Christ, the Lord. He is Christ. The Lord, He is Christ. The Lord, He 
disquies the Lord. Father, we thank you, Lord. We exalt your name. We exalt your name, Heavenly Father. We magnify your name. We exalt your name. We exalt your name, O Lord. Raka Patala Yashaka. We thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence. We thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence. We thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful time. Brasheke Pedora Shabalaya. Bangambandalaya Shekebele. Thank you, Lord, for such a wonderful time in your presence. For in the presence of the, of the Lord there is fullness of joy. We thank you for the fullness of joy. We thank you for the outpouring of the Spirit, Lord. We thank you for your mighty power at work in us. Broko bonda dora sheke pete lea ragabada dora. Rogo bonda leke tora sheke pete laka tora shaka banda laya. I exalt you. I exalt you. Come on, let's sing it to Jesus. We exalt you. Raka patalaya. We exalt you. Oh Lord, we exalt you. We exalt you. Let's sing it to Jesus. We exalt you. Hey, oh Father, we worship you, Jesus. Oh, gross chocobolo, ya shakatala, ya. Lord, I thank you for such a wonderful time in your presence, Lord. As your word come, let your word come with light. Let it come with power. Let it come with transformation of power in the name of Jesus. As I teach, as I preach your word, I pray for light. I pray for insight. I pray for foresight. I pray for farsight. I pray for inspiration. Breathe upon me, O Lord, your breath in the name of Jesus. Every word that will proceed out of my mouth, O Lord, will come with power in the name of Jesus. The entrance of your word will bring life and establish wisdom in the heart and the ears of the listener in the name of Jesus. I take authority over the airwaves. I come against every contention of darkness, against this presentation. It shall not prosper in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You are welcome to this episode of uh, Prosper in the Market Square. I still remain your host. My name is Manasseh Dogon, also known as, known as the Prophetic CEO. I'm privileged to be the lead steward at the Renaissance Place Metropolitan Church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm privileged to be the 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 the, the, the least the word of the Renaissance Place Metropolitan Church. And I trust that God has a word for us today. The word of God is going to bless us today. Yeah, welcome to today's episode of Prospering the Market Square. This is the program put together by the Holy Spirit. God specifically inspired this meeting for you and I in order for we to be able to get well equipped, prepare for that which God is birthing in the in the systems, systems of the earth, amen. In the corporate system, in the marketplace where we are, the things, the move of the spirit that God is about to, to release in that system. So meeting like this helps to equip us with a vital set of knowledge. We need to be able to, uh, how far we to be able to be distinct, uh, distinguished among every other person in the market system. So. The Lord is going to speak to us today in a very definite word. And I trust that our life will never remain the same. So please, let's be open to receive specific instruction from the Lord today. The Bible said the Lord gave the word, but great is the company of them that publish it. So feel free, share this broadcast to your friends and family. Feel free to share it. Tag your friends, tag your family and uh, your friends and family. And I trust that God is going to minister to them in a very dynamic way in the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, I'm going to be teaching on a very vital topic I call the science of uh, spiritual forecasting. The science of spiritual forecasting. Now, I must understand that every spiritual 
one of the greatest responsibility of the modern day church is to be able to incarnate scriptures into technology praise the lord one of the greatest challenge of the present day church or the contemporary age church is in our ability to be able to incarnate certain scriptural truth revelation reality our personal experiences into technology because you know things are evolving and we must understand that every spiritual experience we have with god must be shouldn't just stay around our around our life amen god intention for we is for we to drive this culture to take out our experiences with god to the corporate system the nine gifts of the Spirit, the Bible mentioned in the book of Corinthians. I saw the, twelve, uh, the nine gifts of the Spirit, the Bible mentioned. And the nine fruit of the Spirit, the Bible mentioned in Galatians. The fruit of the Spirit in Colossian, the, the gift of the Spirit in Colossians, the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians, are all God's provision given to you and I, not just to enjoy our personal work with God, but also extend our personal experiences to the corporate system where that we begin to operate these giftings and those fruit of the Spirit begin to find expression in the marketplace, that the gift of healing, the gift of miracle, the gift of faith, the gift of prophecy, the gift of discernment, the gift of healing, you know, the gift of interpretation of tongues begin to find expression, amen, in our respective industries. So, and I trust, I trust that God is going to really help us to understand how to be able to plunge into his intention in this season, amen. So, every gift of the Spirit that God is given to us are meant not just to be enjoyed in our lives. We are not meant to just enjoy it, yeah. But also, we should be able to, our, the reality of the Spirit that has become, I mean, the, the certain spiritual experiences or truth or law that have become a reality, living reality in our lives. Our responsibility is for we to, as we go about our day-to-day -day work, our day-to-day -day practice, we should be able to extend, take that very, our experiences, I mean, the, the gift of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, so that as we begin to interface with the corporate system, our job description is for we to be able to use those gifts of the Spirit. To be able not just, in the church, we edify the church with the gift of the, uh, uh, gift of the Spirit. But when we get to the world, we don't edify them, we act, actually impact them. We reveal the love of Christ through the manifestation of those gifts. So as we begin to operate in the gift of prophecy, in the gift of discernment, in the gift of Word of knowledge, word of wisdom. Now, how, how can word of wisdom be effective in your corporate system? There are certain problems that will eventually arise in your industry, in your city, in your dispensation. There are certain crises, contemplation, puzzles that will come that will defy the, the best of man's knowledge and wisdom. That is when you begin to tap into some of those fruit of the Spirit. You know, there are limitations. Wisdom itself has limitations if it's not inspired by the Holy Spirit. So, the, so the, 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 the word of wisdom and word of knowledge are uh, some of the gifts of the Spirit, are uh, gift of prophecy, are uh, some of the prophetic gifts, some of the gifts in that God expects as we go about our day-to-day -day business. We must explore and deploy the operation of those gifts in the corporate system. That in your organization, that in your industry, in your city, in the city where, we are, where you are now, in the nation where you are, Certain problems begin to come, certain puzzles, certain complicated crises begin to come that defy every logic, every basic principle of logic. You know, now that's when you begin to tap into the spiritual gifts, the gift of discernment, the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom. You begin to use them as supernatural ability to be able to reveal the love of Christ through superior intelligence. How that you can be able to be able to decipher problem in happening in that very ecosystem and by the supply. By the uh, appropriation of the gift of discernment, the gift of word of knowledge, word of wisdom, and word of wisdom, you know exactly what to do in order for you to provide solution in that very uh, uh, contemporary system. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I'm going to be teaching on a subject I call the science of spiritual forecasting. The word forecasting basically uh, simply means to predict future event or condition. The word Forecasting simply means to predict future events or what or condition. And normally, when you do that, you usually, usually as a result of a study or analysis of available pertinent data. Basically, the word 
forecasting basically is talks about the future, predicting the future. How can you stand on your in your present disposition in the now tense, in the present tense, and predict into the future tense with such level of precision and accuracy? Amen. Now, and the earlier we begin to now, the plan of God for us is not just to be aware of our now. We must learn to be futuristic in our approach to entrepreneurship, in our approach to, to the corporate system, to the workplace, I mean to, to the circular system, you know, to the industry, our various industry of operation, in the market ecosystem. We must be, we must, shouldn't just be aware of what is happening now, but by the reason of our revelational relationship with the Holy Spirit. That should be able to sponsor a level of spiritual uh, mastery that we're able to be able to see, not just to know of the things that are happening, but the, of the things to come. Praise the Lord. Of the things to come. Now, the Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 32, it spoke about a tribe called the tribe of Issachar. That these are the men that had understanding of time and season. They were able to gain the mastery of time and sees it. If they peep at the sky, they look at the sky, they look at the rain, they look at the storm, they look at the sun, they'll be able to accurately discern what time is it in relation to their prosperity, in relation to their expansion, in relation to their victory, in relation to their, their advancement. So when they look at the hemisphere, they look at the atmosphere, look at the territory, look at the environment, they can be able to predict the future from where they are now. So by that prediction, they were able to begin to put certain major on ground, things they should put on ground, what they can do in order for them to take advantage of the provision that God that comes with the season that is coming. Praise the Lord. They begin to acquire skills, begin to build capacity, begin to acquire knowledge that will empower them, that will put them on an advantage. When the time that God is bringing the release that is bringing in the future arrives, should the season coming, should the transition coming has certain demonic battle enshrined in it. They begin to equip themselves with a weapon and ammunition that it will empower them to advance and, I mean, achieve victory in the season that is coming. So the tribe of Issachar, they didn't just know, they didn't just have a consciousness of time and season, but they also have know exactly what to do. These are two different things. It's one thing for you to receive spiritual signals Concerning the future, it's one thing for God to speak to you through dreams. There are several times that God shows us things in dreams, revelation. We just have certain knowledge of certain things. You know, supernatural, spontaneous knowledge that comes. But most times we fail to understand that there are also wisdom that is required for we to be able to know exactly what to do to tap into the resources that are going to be available in the coming season. So the train of Issachar, the tribe of Issachar, didn't just have understanding of time, but they also know exactly what Israel ought to do. You must, your spiritual foresight, or your spiritual foresight, or insight, amen, or spiritual sight, must also be backed up with the ability to be able to perform. Of what essence is your sight? If you don't know exactly what to do in order to bring what God has shown you to pass. Of what essence is your spiritual, is the prophetic instincts? Of what essence is your ability to be able to perceive things in the realm of the spirit? If you cannot put necessary measure on ground in order for you to be able to take advantage of the things that God is bringing in the season that is coming. Amen. There are divine programming, amen, encoded, encrypted, engrafted, and crafted deeply into the human DNA by God's word, well, by God at, at conception. Amen. I come again. I come again. There are divine programming, encoded, encrypted, engrafted, and crafted deeply into the human spirit and the human DNA by God at conception. From the first day, a woman takes in there is a spiritual transportation that happens. 
There's an engraftment that happened. That God began to engraft and encrypt prophetic codes, prophetic DNA into the spirit of a man. Amen. The creation of man becomes instinctually prophetic. Amen. Empowered with the supernatural ability to gaze into the future of time, things and commas. Amen. Every one of us, as we have been born by God, there are certain prophetic instincts that are part of our, our makeup. They are part of our, our default system, our default mechanism. They are part of the, the component that makes up the human spirit, our prophetic spirit. Amen. Man's default spiritual impulses, insight, sight, foresight, and farsight, are prophetically configured to forecast at least seven years ahead of the natural happenstance and progression of material time. What that means is that by default, God has programmed man by the, the, the instincts of man, the impulses of man, the far sight, the insight, the sight of man that God has put, put in man by default at creation. Amen are prophetically configured. Amen. To empower man to be able to forecast into the future. Amen. At least seven years into the future. At least seven years into the future. So we all have a prophetic element. We have every man that is born of God at creation has a degree and or proportion of prophetic element carved into his spirit or his spirit. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 5. Amen. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou comest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto nation. Now God was trying to say to, uh, concerning Jeremiah, before his mother, before they gave birth to him, God has formed, has carved the prophetic spirit. Amen. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. Amen. This is the principle of divine predestination. So meaning that the prophetic element has been capped long before as uh, Jeremiah was conceived. God has capped the prophetic element. Amen. He has capped the prophetic life. He has infused the prophetic energy from Jeremiah right before his conception. Amen. Now you see, our environment really matters. One of the things that empower Jeremiah to be able to activate certain prophetic life that God has put in him, it was the environment he was able to find himself. Environment plays a very vital role in activating our prophetic instincts. Environment, when it's right, the chances of we appropriating the prophetic gift that God has put in us is over average. But when the environment is wrong, the chances of the enemy either polluting the gifting that God has given or converting it or adulterating the, the, the purity of the gifting that God has given. At creation, God had never designed any man to be a soothsayer. God, it is never part of God's desire to create a, a sorcerer. It is never part of God's desire for him to create a fortune teller. These are human beings. These are men. These are men and women that right from when they were conceived, God has carved the prophetic spirit. But over time, because they've been given birth in an environment where they are not really, they don't have the... the the leverage or the advantage to be, to be well taught, to be well trained, to be well mentored. A familiar spirit take advantage of that prophetic nature and element. Amen. If a certain familiar spirit that has been domiciling around that region, around that atmosphere, take advantage of this prophetic gift that are carved in the life of, of certain men and women. And by then, they begin to, the enemy begin to inspire them to Declare, you can see that the, the operation of the soothsaying, fortune telling, sorcery, or magic, all of these are part of witchcraft. They are the pure adulteration of certain prophetic elements and gifting that God has carved in man, right from conception. But when man, you know, our environment plays a very vital role to activating the prophetic. The environment you stay, the environment you hang around with, the environment you grow play a very vital role in activating your potential, your divine potential. So when a man 
that is being called into the prophetic or a woman that is being called into the prophetic to be able to see, to forecast the future from the present tense is unfortunate that is not privileged to be given birth in an environment where certain mentorship system is created, certain training structure is in place, certain uh, 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 scriptural based mentorship is program are, are being created. The chances of familiar spirit taking advantage of such a one is over average. So such a one, when the familiar spirit take advantage of this prophetic nature, prophetic life, or prophetic seed that is being planted or engrafted into the human spirit, they begin to operate on the contrary, the contrary adulteration of the prophetic in the form of soothsaying, fortune telling, sorcery, and all the other things. So Jeremiah was his prophetic assignment, journey, didn't begin at birth. It began right before conception. God had carved the prophetic spirit. He has carved the prophetic element. He has equipped him for the work that is ahead of him. God knew that there would be a time in his life as he operates in the earth realm that there would be a need for him to be able to tap into the future, peep into the future, to see the plan and purposes of God kept in the future and begin to do in the now, begin to put in structure certain things in order for him to take advantage of the things that God has released or what God is bringing in the coming season. Praise the Lord. Amen. The prophetic spirit has been carved and crafted into us right from conception. Every one of us to a certain degree that are prophetic elements that God has put in us. That are prophetic life that God has encrafted in us. But this thing has not been well cultivated. Either they are not cultivated or they are polluted or they are not even discovered. God, by nature, designed you and I to be prophetic. Hallelujah. John chapter 3, verse 8. John 3, verse 8. The wind bloweth, or the wind blows, wherever it wants, just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from, or where it's going. So you can't explain how many are born of the Spirit. Meaning that everyone that is born of the Spirit has a prophetic element. You cannot design the wind. You cannot cage the wind. You cannot determine where it goes. You cannot predict the wind. Amen. The Bible says anyone that is born of God is like the wind. You cannot design. You cannot discern where the wind is going and where the wind is coming. So is everyone that is born of God. Meaning that everyone that is born of God has a prophetic element. Because the unpredictability nature of the wind reveals a dimension of the prophetic. And the Bible says, if the Bible says that anyone that is born of God is like a wind, you can't discern where it's coming and where it's going, meaning that we all have a prophetic uh, 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 life that God has put in us at creation. When we receive the life of Jesus into our life, that are created, that are prophetic uh, transmission that happens to our mind, that makes us not to operate life like manually, not to operate life manually, not to approach life like every other sensual human being. That our life becomes unpredictable. It becomes, it begins, it, the, the, the reading becomes prophetic. Everything about our life be, begins to change by the reason of we accepting Jesus into our life as our personal Savior. Amen. Everyone born of the Spirit has a degree and dimension of prophetic life, signature it needs or a spirit. Anyone that is born again. Amen. That received Jesus into his or our life as his personal savior. Amen. As a degree and dimension of prophetic life, signature in his or our spirit. Amen. Now, the, uh, the, the programming of a prophetic spirit, you know, you will have to understand that there are, there are programmings of prophetic spirit. There are certain programming of prophetic spirit. Amen. And until we're able to be able to activate that, there are certain level of pred prediction we cannot predict in the market. As we work in that corporate system, if the enemy can predict your next move, if the enemy can predict your next step, can predict your next future, the enemy can fight it. If the enemy can fight it, he can stop it. So our advantage is the operation of this, this, this programming, the programming of the prophetic spirit. God has programmed 
the prophetic culture, the prophetic spirit into our lives. Amen. John chapter 16 from verse 12 to 15. John 16 from verse 12 to 15. I have yet many things to say to you unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. I'll be it. And I mean that Jesus was sick. He talking. He said, he has so, so much to say. So, so much. Time will not be allowed. The greatest limitation that stands between the revelation of God and man is time. It's time. And why, why time, time normally, time was not, time is not supposed to limit the revelation of God's will. But because man is, has been created to function within the corridor of time. So time by default became, became, becomes one of the greatest limitations of the revelation of the Spirit of God within the realm of man. So Jesus said, he has so, so much to say. He has so much to reveal. He has so much to say. The time is not limited. The time is not, it's not, it's not going to be enough. He has so, so much to say. But yeah, they cannot bear it. You cannot comprehend. They cannot comprehend it. They cannot comprehend it. There's no time and their comprehension is very minimal. Now look at verse 13. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. Meaning that the Holy Spirit, when he comes, he guide us into all truth. And the truth that the Holy Spirit is guiding us to is not the truth that is behind us. Neither is it the truth that is in our present tense. It's talking about future truth. The blessing of the Lord, the prophetic word that, that, that was spoken over, over your life, certain promises that God has spoken that you have not entered into the reality, is the future. It's talking about the future. So when the Holy Spirit comes into you, when ye, the Spirit of truth, come, he shall guide you into all truth, not into some truth. Meaning that we, as, as we begin to walk in the corporate system, in our respective place of assignment, amen, industry of spiritual assignment, we are not supposed to be in the dark. Why? Because the person, the agency by which God has, has, has mandated to lead us is the agency of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says He will guide us. The truth that the Holy Spirit is guiding us is not the truth in the now. It's not the truth in the past. But the truth concerning the future. Things that will be, things that will happen. Things that will happen ahead of you in the market. Where to put your money. Where not to put your money. Where, what skill to acquire. What skill not to acquire. There are a lot of Christians that are wasting their time. Building career in the area that God has not called them. Why? Because they're not prophetic. They're not, the, the ability for them to tap into the future. And see the emphasis of God in the future from the now. So that they can be able to start doing things in the now. That we empower them with the, with the mantle. Or the grace for them to take advantage of the things that God is bringing. Praise the Lord. There are a lot of Christians acquiring skills that are not connected to their purpose. It's wasting time in a relationship that is not connected in any way to what God is preparing them to. Why? Because they are not prophetic. Their ability to be able to see into the future, to tap into the future, to predict the future... To forecast the future, and by forecasting it, they're able to put a certain structure that will empower them to be able to walk in God's walk into God's prophetic provision. It's not there. So the Lord said, I'll be it when He, the Spirit of Truth, will come. He will guide you into all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak. And He will He will show you things to come. The Bible says that one of the descriptions of the work of the Holy Spirit is to show you things to come. There are things to come in your industry where you are now. In the system where you are, in the city where you are, there are things to come. Things to come are not present tense, they are future tense. Things to come are not, are not but they are in the future. They are in 10 years, they are in 20 years, they are in 15 years, they are in 5 years, they are in 7 years, they are in 3 years, they are in 2 years. Things to come are, are exclusively future. Antecedent. Amen. But the Bible says when the Holy Spirit comes, it will, it will, the Bible says what? It what? And he will what? show you things to come. The word show there speaks about a sight, spiritual sight. It speaks about a spiritual ability to see. The Holy Spirit shall show you, shall show you. Meaning that is this scripture is talking about the human side. The point we get to in our work with God, with the Holy Spirit, that we're able, we're able to walk into divine partnership. That we begin to see the things that God is emphasizing through the agency and the empowerment of the Spirit. Amen. Verse 14. He shall glorify me for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Meaning that God reveals revelation through the Holy Spirit. 
It brings information about the future. Certain data, certain information, certain things we need concerning the future. God begins to give us the data, download the data, information to us. So that we don't lose, we don't keep ourselves in the dark. We begin to work with precision. We don't run our life by trial and error. You know, the, why, why, we don't, why we don't have this certain level of conviction, certain level of direction by the Holy Spirit, we will always live our life by trial and error. Amen. Verse 15. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I, that he shall, what? Let me read up. All things that the Father had are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. The word show is mentioned three times in this scripture. The word show is mentioned three times in this scripture. That when the Holy Spirit comes, it shows you. It activates your eyes. It opens your eyes. Ability is not just to see in the now tense, into the future tense. The Holy Spirit begins to inspire you to see. The Spirit began to inspire to see. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 to 11. 1 Corinthians chapter, chapter 2, from verse 9 to 11. But as it is written, Eyes had not seen, nor hear had, neither has it entered into the heart of men, the things which, the, which God had prepared for them that love him. Verse 10. But God had revealed them unto us by his Spirit. So the revelation of the future antecedent that will happen in the market, that will happen in that business, the future of that industry, the future of that sector, the future of that economy, the future of that nature, of that nation, the future of that territory where you are, the future of that ecosystem where you are now. The Bible says the Holy Spirit, God, the Bible says what? Amen. The Bible says, but God had revealed them unto us by His Spirit, for the Spirit is such in all things. Even the deep things of God. The deep things of God are not the now. Are not in the now. He is, are not in the now experience. That they are future antecedent. Certain things that are exclusively meant for the future. Certain blessings. Certain favor. Certain revelation. Certain information. Certain data. That are meant for the future. But by the reason of the, your partnership. Our partnership with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit tap into the future. Even, even into the future of the future. The Holy Spirit tap into it. And begin to bring information to us. To empower us to be able to take advantage. Begin to prepare ourselves. Building capacity. Building wells. Building system. Building strategy. Adopting strategy. In order for we to take advantage of the blessing that God is bringing. A lot of Christians are not. Their approach to their business. To their ecosystem. To their economy. To their territory. To their industry. Is not futuristic. They are not even aware of what is happening now, let alone talk about the future. A lot of good, God-fearing, righteous, holy, sanctified believers are not even aware of what is happening in the future. They are so heavily conscious and earthly irrelevant. They are not aware of what is happening. The name of the governor of their state, they don't know. Name of the senator happening, they don't know. Name of the ministers of their name, they don't know. Name of the people, the key people in leadership there. And this is talking about even the present tense, not about the future. Amen. So the Bible said the Holy Spirit is interested more about the future. It's a, it's a prophetic spirit. That when it comes upon us, that is one of his working, that one of his working in our lives is, a, is the ability to be able to tap into future data, future information, future, inf I mean, certain future agenda and bring it down to you. And why would the Holy Spirit do that? In order for you to begin to prepare yourself now for the future, begin to acquire the skills, begin to acquire the information, begin to build the capacity, begin to build structure, begin to build relational capital, relationship with people, in order for you to take advantage of when the blessing comes in the future. When you get to the industry where you are now, the next two years, the next three years, the next ten years, there are certain things that you, you don't prepare for battle in the days of battle. You prepare for battle before battle. So when the Holy Spirit tap into the future and empower you to be able, uh, your eyes to begin to forecast, to see into the future event, now the Holy Spirit is doing that with a primary intention to make you put certain structure in place now, put, begin to do certain things now that will give you leverage in the future. Begin to acquire certain skills. Begin to build certain relationship. Begin to stretch your capacity mentally, spiritually, and otherwise in order to be able to receive and to retain the things that God will bring in the future. 
The essence of revelation is to get us prepared. Prepare for tomorrow. Building structure, infrastructure, building capacity, coding system. Amen. In order for we to be able to prepare now for tomorrow. Amen. Praise the Lord. So the Spirit of God is a prophetic spirit. Amen. Verse 11. For what man knoweth the things of man, save the Spirit of man which is what in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. The Holy, I mean, the Holy Spirit operation in our lives makes us unpredictable to the, to the prevalent evil in the world system. The operation of the Holy Spirit in our lives empower us to be unpredictable to the world system. But to your fellow believer, the Bible says we are not always or we will not we are not always unpredictable to ourselves or to a believer. The Bible said the spirit is said, bear witness with my spirit that we are the sons of God. But when you get to the world system, you go to the circular system where you are, they become unpredictable. Why? Because you, the, the future doesn't take you unaware. The future does not take, take you unaware. Before the future happens, you, you, you are seven years ahead of time. You are ten years ahead of time. Ten years ahead of others. So when you begin to approach the market system, or that corporate system with that very consciousness, there are certain prices you begin to pay now, certain extra oil you begin to carry now, that people around you that are not prophetic will not see the need of it. When the Bible spoke about the, 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 the bride that was coming, uh, the, 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 the groom, that was, uh, the, the, what happened in first, uh, Matthew chapter 20, uh, 25. And the Bible said there were 10 virgins. When the groom was coming, there were 10 virgins. Five were foolish, were foolish. Five were wise. The, what made the five that were wise to be wise is because they went extra mile. They were prophetic. God, God inspired their, their eyes for them to see what is happening, what will come. And the things that are required for them to structure now, to put now, so that when the opportunity comes in the future, it will not take them unprepared, taking them unaware. So the five virgins were foolish because they, they didn't go an extra mile. When the others are going extra mile, they didn't see any need. So when the future, when they eventually walk into the future, when the groom came, the Bible mentioned that the ones that were wise were able to take advantage of the blessing of the opportunity that comes to that season. Why the ones that were foolish were taking off the whole scene. They had to go and start buying extra oil and before they could go, the opportunity that was meant for them in that season was taken away from them. It was stripped off them. Now, the the importance of we forecasting the market is that God begin to inspire us with wisdom to begin to do things, put structure in our lives, build capacity, do certain things extra mile. If the person that you're working with, your colleague, doesn't see the future, he may not be able to start doing the things that we need to do to prepare him. Amen. To take advantage of the, of the future. Amen. So I'm going to stop here now. Amen. So that tomorrow we get to continue from here. This teaching is a whole... I'm just introducing the topic. Your life will never remain the same. Your life will never, never remain the same. I pray that may your spiritual eyes be activated in the name of Jesus. May your spiritual eyes, your ability to see into the realm of the Spirit be activated so that the capacity that you need to build, you begin to build them. The capacity you need to build, you begin to build them. The skills you, begin to, you need to acquire, you begin to acquire them. The, the, the relationship you need to begin to make, you begin to make them. In the name of Jesus, I pray for you that let the hand of God be mighty over your life. In the name of Jesus, let the ability of the Spirit come upon your life. In the name of Jesus, let your mighty power come upon this one. In the name of Jesus, every spiritual blindness, I crush it in the name of Jesus. Every form of spiritual blindness, by the authority in the name of Jesus, I destroy, I terminate. In the name of Jesus, I command your eyes to be open. Every veil is consumed. I command your eyes to be activated. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. See you tomorrow. The Lord bless you.